So I was called to, um, I'm reading this ECU. So what I'll do is because it is botch, I'll use the botch number to decode and find the ECU number or the type of ECU it is. So with OBD star, they've done an inbuilt uh, botch query search. So you can see it is ME17.5.6. So with this, now I know the type of ECU I'm dealing with. So I'll do the ME17.5.6 so that um, if, um, OBD, if OBD star has it, I'll be able to know. And it is VinW. So I select VinW. Then I check the wiring diagram to connect according to the pin. And with this one, I'm using M Z MP001. Um, it is, so I'll select bench and MP001. So I'll wait for it to load. And you have to get internet for it to work. Without internet, it's not going to work. I don't know why all the ECU um, manufacturer, all the ECU reading manufacturers are doing that. You have to connect. Okay, sometimes it needs to read password online. That's why they do. So you can see the verification has been done and it's now writing the boot loader for it to allow the ECU to communicate with the machine so that you can be able to pull, you can be able to read and write for us. So you can see the unique ECU ID chip, uh, ID, chip ID. So you can see the password verification was done and now the configuration is done. So what I need to do is to read the EEPROM. So this one has internal EEPROM and internal flash. So with this one, if you want to do cloning whilst you don't have the machine, the best thing you need to do is to swap the MCU straight because they are all internal EEPROM and internal flash. So I'll let it finish reading and you can see the EEPROM has two sectors, so it is done reading. So now I'll save it according to the vehicle name so that in case I need a backup or something, I can be able to do it also. So what I'll do is uh, after reading this ECU, um, I'll see if it can give me the emo data in the next video because it is stated that read emo data, which means I can read the emo data from the ECU. So what I'll do is now um, uh, they're saving it and it's going off. So let me read the internal flash. And the internal flash will take much time because that one has more megabytes than the EEPROM. EEPROM has less kilobytes and the internal flash has more megabytes. So now it's verifying and writing the bootloader to allow it to be able to read the ECU. So if you can see, we are having our sectors, 16 sectors addressed. So it will read all of them. Then after that, it will tell me it is done. So I'll just wait for it to finish the read. I really like this tool, but I, I, I'll prefer maybe Exos. Um, it, it depends because this one is quick and easy to go. But when it comes to the Addicting that's where there is a bit issue because you have to copy it onto the PC or you have to send it to your phone to send it to anyone who wants to addict it for you so that you can work with it. So this one I'll wait for all the sectors to read. So after all the sectors are done reading, then I'll save it. So that maybe if I want to do emo off, one thing about this tool is you can use it for emo off. So if I want to do emo off, then maybe I can do that. But after reading the data, we will later go to the other functions and check what this is, what this machine can do. And um, I'll, I'll try and start also a training section on it after some months. So I'm preparing for that. So this one you can see we have internal EEPROM data convection. Uh, I didn't try that, which is into bracket clone. So maybe next time when I have an ECU to clone, I'll do that. 
So now it is at 12th sector. So it's now reading the 12th sector, the 13th, then it will go to 14, 15, 16. So I'll just wait. So it's not all the ECUs that you can do this on because some of the botch ECU you can do the emo read so the more normally the emo read is for those ECU. so i'm almost done and you can see the flash the antenna flash is almost two megabytes that's why we are taking time so at least it takes like two to three minutes to finish reading the antenna flash and with this one even if the mileage is stored on the ECU, you can even calibrate it. So I really like the features that they've added. That's the only different they beat Exos with. Because Exos don't have those features apart from reading and writing. So if you want to do any editing or anything, you have to find a third party software. And I don't know if Exos will do the update or will update it so that we can have those features. And I think if they do it to it will affect the VVDI Pro 2. Because those are those are those are the softwares where you can do the editing. When I say editing, I mean read emo data and read other other things. So or do keys. So if you if they add it to the machine, it will affect their market. So this is the reason why I like OBD Star. Sometimes I like OBD Star when it comes to Windows B because reading emo data is one of the key things. And so far as I can write scripts now. Uh, but I'm trying to train myself to learn how to write a script so that I can be writing them. So if you know anyone who can write third-party script for you, for you to use it with the VVD uh, X Horse Motor Pro, you are good to go. You can do the other functions like the emo read data, um, emo data description, and other things. So I'll wait for the last sector to be done then what i'll do is uh, i'll save it and maybe later in the day I, i'll see what i can do about it because it doesn't have the emo off here and i know some of the uh so the, some of their ecus when you open them you get emo off and it is done reading so the antenna flash is done reading so i'll just add the vehicle name to it and the year so that in case i'm searching for it i know where to get it Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. So I'll, I'll also do a comparison. One day I'll bring the video maybe next two weeks or next week. Thank you for watching.